as winter begins to set in across Sydney, the sea temperature drops and a lot of the pelagic fish tend to move north following the warmer waters. The whales have started their annual migration too. And with this, the fishing generally becomes a bit slower, particularly if you're targeting pelagics. But if you put in enough effort, there's definitely some good ones still around. So let's head back to the ledge. And in this episode, I'm going to be targeting Benito. And I'm going to do a catch and cook tempura and sashimi. So let's get into it. Mate, I can't even catch a Benito today. <laughs> That's bad. It's just one of those days. It's really bad. They're there. You got one. So. Yeah, yeah, they're there. I had, I had a few hits. Yeah. By the jumps the, uh, In the beginning of this session, I was using really large profile lures and it wasn't working. So I switched down to a smaller profile lure to see what would happen. Could have hit them, I think. Yeah, it's, I hit something then. Okay. I try to just change down a little. I think the profile might have been a little big. Oh, yeah. You know, sometimes they're finicky and they just want something small. Yeah. Actually, worked. Yeah, changing down that profile worked. It's that little bit smaller. Funny when it's just that little difference. Because everything else I was doing was the same. Same cast, same technique. All about that profile. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> Don't want to drop the only fish I've hooked this morning. All right, I think I'm going around somebody's line here. Come on. Come on. Oh mate, come on. What's going on here? Come on. Almost had it. Come on. Oh, that's a good bonnie. Nice. Wow. Finally, really slow morning. Just changed that profile to a little bit of a smaller jig. Made all the difference, just a smaller profile. about 50, just over 55 centimeters, might be 56, 57. Good size bonnie, all right. Let's dispatch that one and keep it for sashimi. Awesome. That's a good one for sashimi. Stoked with that. All right, pretty slow session overall. I'm glad that I switched it up and changed down to that smaller profile. That really made all the difference because I was casting all morning with larger profiles and nothing was sticking. All right, let's start cooking. The tempura batter I use just comes in a box, so it makes it pretty easy. 
really just read the instructions and mix it together. First we get three quarters of a cup of water, put that into a mixing bowl and pour the tempura batter mix on top of it. Then you mix it up and you don't have to worry if it's chunky because that's totally fine. Once you cook it, that's going to make a really crackly and crispy outer coating. I actually realized that there wasn't enough water in here, so decided to just ad lib a little bit and make it to the consistency. Tempura batter really just needs to be quite a watery texture so that it can make a really light coating on there. So if you need to add some extra, what I did was just mixed in some plain flour and some corn flour together. I think that's generally what tempura batter mix is. Next step is to get the bonito. Such a good looking fish. I really like these late season bonito. They're generally really fat, very tasty, lots of good fats in there. We quickly fill out the fish. The main thing is to make sure you don't have any cross contamination. So I always wash the chopping board in between. Cross contamination is when you get bacteria from either the skin or the gut cavity onto the meat that you want to eat and that can make you sick. So we want to avoid that. Then it's about cutting it into some really nice slabs. That one looks good for sashimi so I'm actually going to cut some sashimi off that one and then the rest of it and the off cuts I'm going to use for tempura. I generally cut out the bloodline, I just don't like that stronger taste but it really is up to you. You can eat it if you want, it's just a little bit of a stronger taste. That's what I'm doing here is just removing that bloodline. Do the same to the next fillet, removing those bones through the middle and then removing the bloodline, cleaning it all up. Washing the chopping board again with soap and warm water, making sure that we avoid cross contamination at all times. What I like to do here is just where that skin came off, there's that little bit of leftover on the top. So I spend a bit of time just cleaning it up. You don't have to do this, not everyone does it, but I like to do it. It makes a clean slab of fish. Then it's about sashiming it. Really just one even slice pulling in one direction. That's going to make it taste as best as possible. Think of that as when you're cutting a bit of wood and if you go against the grain that it's going to make it really rough. When it makes it rough it makes more surface area which makes the fish taste more fishy. So if you do one clean slice then it's going to be very smooth cut and the fish is going to taste very clean. There we go, nice little platter. Put that in the fridge and start to cut up some of the fish for tempura. I like to just cut these in bite-sized chunks, whatever you think is gonna cook well as well. So they're fairly even all the way around, which means that they're gonna cook pretty evenly. If you have really thick pieces, it's going to take a lot longer to cook. So then the outside is going to be cooked more than the inside. So I like to just cut them that size and seem to work. Also cut up some vegetables and tempura those as well. You can really throw whichever vegetables you like. These are some ones that I chose. Rice, sashimi, tempura veggies and tempura fish for dinner. It's going to be good. Just starting off with the mushrooms, put them in the butter, make sure they're evenly coated and once you're satisfied with them, 
drop them into the hot oil, which is about 160 degrees. Then you cook them for a few minutes until they're nice and crunchy. And what I tend to do here is try not to get them to stick to the bottom, which is a challenge. To get the oil off them, I put a couple of pieces of paper towel down and that helps when you're getting them out of the fryer and putting them onto the paper towel to get rid of that oil. Next up, just follow that exactly the same technique for everything, all of the veggies and then the fish. I usually finish with the fish because fish is best when it's really, really hot and fresh. Next step is to make the tempura dipping sauce. This is three quarters of a cup of water, a teaspoon of dashi powder, and what you do with this is stir it and simmer that over a medium heat. Make sure it's all mixed in. Then add one and three quarter tablespoons of mirin and one and three quarter tablespoons of rice wine vinegar and a tablespoon of soy and that's it mix that together simmer it down and there's your tempura dipping sauce ready to go almost there just finishing up with the final veggies with the last parts of the tempura batter everything's cooking out really nice and there it is Beautiful dinner, really simple and tasty too. What we did with the bonito the next day is made a fish stock out of it so that we didn't waste any. We used that to make a seafood chowder and it was absolutely delicious. Alright, thanks for watching. See you next time.